Hello guys and welcome back to a new tutorial series. Now, this is going to be a very basic stamina series, replicated as you can see here with the server and the client. Got a very basic UI with the progress bar on both. If I went to the client here, you can see that as I press shift, it replicates the stamina down to the client. And if I go to the listen server, it does the same. Sorry, I was just pressing E instead of W. And as you can see, it does that double job. Now, if you go to the output log here, you can see that the listen server is replicating both the, the client and the server thing. So, if you're confused by this, you should be cleared up by mentioning about the net modes that you can have here. So, you can have standalone, which is what many of you will be familiar with. It's like single player games where it doesn't need a server or a client or any of this sort of multiplayer framework, it's literally just a game. You've got the listen server which is a client and the server, so it's best for like casual multiplayer games or competitive games, that sort of thing. And then you've got client mode which sets up a dedicated server in the background, and that's mainly for testing for like large scale games like, I don't know, like Call of Duty or I don't know or maybe like MMOs, that sort of thing, like really big large scale stuff where you need a dedicated server to handle all that traffic. But my uh, multiplayer stamina system can handle both stand well, standalone, as a server and client just fine. This is going to be a very basic introduction to replication and networking. So if I go to my third person blueprint and look at the character, you can kind of see what's going on here. So, I've got two components over here. I've got a stamina component here, which holds the stamina and the max stamina. And I've got the sprint component here, which handles the decay step and regenerate the step. This is basically what um, controls how fast this the stamina here decays. So, yeah, you should see down here rep component replicates. This is very important. None of this will work if the, both of these are not set to replicate. But what is replication exactly? It's it's basically how data from the server and the client sync up with one another. When a value changes on the server, it gets sent to the client, and you can control how or who this data is sent to. And <clears throat> all that lovely good stuff. So if I was to just add a variable down here, just cool. Uh, Boolean is fine, and just set it to replicate by this job down here, you got replicated and you got rep notified. These are two very different, well, I say very different, slightly different methods of replication. Replicated just means like beta replication, the actor will handle it. That's what an actor essentially is, it's a connection to the server. And as such, every actor can replicate, depending on who owns it, we'll go into that in the next episode probably, when we actually start, start implementing the uh, components in C++. And yeah, rep notifies however, if I was to select this, you should be able to see we've now select we've now created a new function. Now if I was to double click on this, what this does is every time this variable is updated on the server, this function will run on the client. Now this gets a bit tricky on listen servers because sometimes there's a bit of a discrepancy on the listen server side of things, because it's both the server and the client, so it doesn't always run. Uh, which makes this a server a bit, tr a bit more of a pain to use, but it's better for smaller scale games, multiplayer games, that sort of thing. Now I've got replication conditions here. If you click that down, initial owner, all of these things. I've only really used the owner only. Um, this is a bit more complicated than, or not complicated, more like there's a lot of documentation on this, and I'll leave a link to that down below. But yeah, you can, this is how you control who, what is replicated to. So setting it to none means that it's replicated to all clients. And speaking of that, let's just quickly have a look at what's going on here. So when I'm holding left shift on the character, it's sending a what's called an RPC or a remote procedure call to the server, and it's telling it I want to enable the sprint. 
and then down here when you release the left shift it's still it's doing that. I'm not using the enhanced input system here, this was just supposed to be setting it up, getting it working, that sort of thing. So let's have a look behind the hood. So if I was to double click on this, project files not available, sure. Uh, might be quicker to just go to Rider. Okay, this is a bit of a mess, bear with me. And just, there we go. Okay, so this is the C. I'll be going over everything here um, and creating it from scratch, including what these weak object pointers are. But this is the function uh, disconnect. There we go. That's the. Yeah, there we go. This is the stamina component, this is the spring component. Sorry for all the jumping back and forth, I don't know really what's going on. Okay, so. Spring components, da, 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 server. So this is what's going on on the server, and this is the header file part of things. Yeah, as it says here, it's an RPC to toggle the stamina on the server, and it's essentially toggling the sprint here. It's basically just calling this. Neat little thing with RPCs is every function that's called on it, unless it's another RPC, will be run on that machine, essentially. So if it's a server RPC, then every function proceeding on from that, so this function here, the toggle sprint, will be run on the server if it's calling, unless it's calling to a client or a multicast, which is basically just sending the data from the server to every client. But just a owning client, which is which is what this is, is the actor that owns the RPC, if that makes sense. I'll leave the documentation down below and some resources that I personally use to get this working. But here we go. So we're toggling the sprint, and this is very important if the owner has authority. This is basically checking if the actor that owns this component has authority. Since we set it to replicate, and this is going to be sent to the server, then the owning actor should have authority. Okay. Now we're enabling sprint, and then we're basically pausing or unpausing some timers, and telling the component the stamina component to um, enable sprint. So what does that actually do? It basically just enables the sprint and broadcasts it, so we're using the sprint. But this is all happening on the server, how do we actually get that onto the widget itself? So, let's have a look. We're basically setting the stamina component in the blueprint and then we're checking if it's valid then, at, then attach it to some events and then set the maxing current and max stamina value. So that's how you do it. You just basically, since it's replicating, you can do that because it should have a, it should have a copy both on the server and on the client. And since it's on the client and yeah. I'll also leave a link to um, the compendium, which is a very fancy word for multiplaying and networking with an Unreal. So you guys can have a look through it before we start the actual tutorial series, just so you guys can understand what's going on. I shall actually try and get it off actually before multiplayer, multiplayer compendium. And it should be here. This is what I'm talking about. It's very, very useful. Uh, resource this. Basically everyone that I know who knows how to use multiplayer in Unreal started with this. Go for, uh, let's have a look. There we go. This is what we're on about when we're talking about why it's important regarding client and server. So, like me, I, th I assume a lot of you were wondering when you first opened Unreal why everything split up into uh, controller, state, cat pawns, game state, game mode, that sort of thing, like why is everything separated? This is, at least what I found, is the most likely reason why it's been split up because Unreal Engine was designed to be a engine for Unreal Tournament. Graphic games. So obviously they needed a way to separate everything and this is actually built into the engine. This is, this is why it's separated a lot of the times. Because when you're making a single player game, a lot of this you don't really need to care about, but for multiplayer games you need, you need to care about what 
the relationships between all of these things are. And as you can see here, the hood is on only the client, the owning client to be specific. And to get and the game mode is only on the service, so the hood and the game mode can't really interact with each other because there's no connection there. This is probably going to be the source of a lot of bugs that you guys find in multiplayer. At least in my experience, this is where I lost my bugs came from, which is where is the component or the actor living, essentially. And this might make it a bit more clear. This companion, I mean. And it's even got some stuff on remote procedure calls, so you've got server, client and net multicast. Ownership, which is very, very important. Replication, which I, this is, yeah, this, this is very important for actor replication. So you got all these settings here, but yeah, I shall leave that up to you to look through. But yes, I hope you find this useful, um, and I hope that this tutorial series will help you at least feel more comfortable using multiplayer. And if you just came here for a multiplayer, replicated multiplayer uh, system with sprinting and stamina and the ability to modularize, I guess you could say, the stamina system, then I've actually released this plugin on the Unreal Marketplace. I shall leave a link for that down below as well. It's a good way to help support the channel and my work. So yeah. I hope, I hope if you leave a like down below, I'll it'll let me know that this is a or a comment if you don't want to like it. That this that will let me know that this is a series worth creating. The Clue System plugin uh, tutorial series is coming soon. I've just been swamped with work essentially, um, and I've also been reworking it because I'm not happy with what it was before. I'm very excited to show you guys what that's looking like now. Yeah, I do hope you guys can forgive me for being a bit slow with that tutorial, particular tutorial series. Um, yeah, hope you guys will find this series useful. If you did, uh, I shall hopefully see you in the next episode. Take care, guys.